Hello, 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 Burning With G, episode 3, welcome back, baby. It's been a long year since I made my last podcast, but I'm back and I'm better. Let's get straight to it. So what are we talking about today? Today, I'm going to be focusing on principles and the importance of it and how we can change our mindset into a principle-centric mind. So what got me thinking about this to begin with all the way from the top is I basically fell into this look forward to the weekend mindset where my weekdays would just fly by immediately just because I would look forward to this date or look forward to this party or event. I would keep that as something that would drive me through the week. But what I realized later on is the problem with that is time flies by too fast. And there was this one quote that has always stuck with me and I thought it was really powerful. It doesn't matter what we're doing, we're all walking each other to the same place. The, the main idea of that is every day you use is one day you are closer to death. And I think that really makes me feel responsible for what I do on a day-to-day basis because if it's wasted, I don't get that day back. So I don't want to live that look forward to the weekend mindset anymore because I don't want to waste Monday to Thursday. So I started thinking a lot about how to rewire my mind so I can really appreciate every moment, whether I'm dancing, whether I'm studying, whether I want to really be in that moment appreciating it to the maximum that I possibly can. So I did a lot of soul searching. I haven't really gotten anywhere. I've tried making a bunch of lifestyle changes. Nothing happened. And I realized the problem is I keep look I keep looking to change things about my lifestyle and I'm not looking to change my mind itself. So what I really want to make this podcast for is to just be able to highlight some of the questions that I've been able to ask myself that have helped me get to a better place. And even if one person listens to it and some of those questions help them in their journey as well, then it's a win-win situation. So I think the best way to make this podcast be as useful as possible to you is if you have a piece of paper and just write down, I'm gonna like give these like two like parts of the podcast where I'm gonna actually ask a question. And if you take some time to introspect, be like, you know, think about it yourself and then write your own answer I think that will be really helpful what I'm going to be focusing on today is this book that I've recently been reading called the seven habits of highly efficient people by Stephen Covey he basically breaks down these seven habits which you know each one takes years to implement but today I want to mainly focus on habit two so it's called begin with the end in mind so imagine that after you die what happens is you become this ghost and you're still able to see what goes on on earth so once you die Imagine that you're able to see your funeral. And this is a lot, this is many years in the future. So you have kids, you have a wife or husband, you have, your parents are still there, and you have your friends there. When you're at your funeral, what is it that you wish all these people would say, right? What is it that you want to be remembered for? Because there is this saying that each person goes through two deaths. One is when you and your physical body die. And two is when everyone who's ever remembered you or knows about you also dies. So what is it that after you pass away, you want all these people to remember you as? So take a while and think about this. And you can even pause the podcast and come back to it after you come up with an answer. So cool. So before I actually go into the question itself, I want to highlight the importance of asking this question. The earlier we're able to even have some sort of vague answer, it's that much better. Because the older you get, there are more constraints around you, right? You may have more financial constraints, you may have energy constraints, you may have health constraints. There's a ton of things. But right now, you know, in our 20s especially, the whole world is open to us still. We can choose where we want to move. We still have a lot of flexibility with our careers. We're not married yet. We don't have kids yet. We can choose who we want to be. So being able to actually have this some sort of end in sight is very very helpful for people like us and the reason is is it forms and gives us some sort of compass to be able to navigate through our lives right because the thing is what i realized is a lot of these books they try to tell you that they offer some sort of path to immediate happiness like oh exercise 90 minutes a day x do this and as if there's like one answer that just leads all of us to happiness right Every single one of our brains functions so differently and the way we process and taking information is just very different. So whatever works for me may not necessarily work for you and it may not work for anybody else. It may only work for me. So what that means is the proper way to help each other out, help ourselves and others is just help people ask the right questions. 
Nobody can give you the answers and no one can even try to, but what they can do is point you in the right direction. So now when we look at this experiment and we see what type of answers that we've all come up with, we can see that most people won't have answers that say, I wish I had the most sex out of everybody I know. I wish I had 10 million Instagram followers and 30 million Twitter retweets. Being able to remove those things from our desires and passion helps us see the world with more clarity. We can see, okay, if this is my end goal, I know that I can take these X steps to get there. And whatever is not part of that plan, screw it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who thinks I'm what, right? Because that's not going to, at the end of the day, I know that that's not part of my end goal. So basically going off that, Kovi, I think that's how you say his name. It may be Kovey, but who knows? I'm going to just say Kovi. So Kovi basically analyzes eight or nine different centers from family-centric, money-centric, self-centered. And he basically says that people who suffer from these different values oftentimes face a lot of difficulties in life. So the reason he says this is because all of these different centers, for example, family and money, are external, correct? So what that means is that your happiness and your pleasure from life is not coming from within. It's coming on a dependence from something else going right. So for example, if you're money centered, you're going to view people who are poorer than you as less than you and people who are richer than you as better than you right what is what's the problem in this if already in your head before you meet them if you're like oh anybody who works a minimum wage job is a piece of shit then you basically cut cut out so many people from ever being able to have a, a really fruitful relationship because there are a ton of great people in this world same thing with family centric like oh what's your cast right like people use all types of crazy stuff just to make themselves feel better but it never really comes from within it's a bunch of labels i'm very not like you know i'm american yeah but that has nothing to do with you you just were born here so to counter this kobe basically provides something he provides what he believes is a solution which is called a principle centric mindset so principles are what you stand by every single day that doesn't move you from left or right that really stands for who you are no matter what happens around you you stick by your principles so i want to use this example from this book called hotel by arthur haley he's this british author who i really really like the way he writes uh, he basically combines a bunch of different plots and brings it all into one very cool so the, the story takes place in a time when uh, segregation was still there there's this dentist convention that happens and one of the most renowned dentists there is going to be black so when they come to this hotel to check in they don't allow black people to stay there. So then the entire dentist convention has like this whole meeting and they're like, what are we gonna do about this? They've, dis they've disrespected us. And there are a lot of dentists who uh, share the same opinion that wouldn't we be doing more harm by not being able to have this convention and sharing the great ideas between us than standing up for the civil right? Because at the end of the day, like he's not gonna be here anyway. And so that's what happens. The entire dentist convention stays there. And there's only one dis dissident. I think that's a word, I don't know if, the person who disagrees basically and there's only one of those guys and he basically says look everybody always does this sort of like inconvenience measure on them when when actually put to the test there are barely any principle anyone will stand up for if it in inconveniences them even to the slightest and i sat back and i thought about that for a while i was like that's actually crazy there are so many people who put up their entire lives fighting for something that they truly believed in so when I had to measure myself and be like, okay, what are the principles that I actually stand up for very, very strongly? Even if I take, I say, okay, I'm going to start sleeping early. Give it two weeks, done. I'm going to go to the gym every day. Give it a week and a half, give it two weeks. I'm going to find a couple of days to start skipping. No matter what I kind of say that I'm going to do, I oftentimes have a very difficult time following through, which is basically exactly what the principle-centered mindset is about. Find something you want to do and stick to it. Stick to some sort of consistency. I'm going to practice this every single day. And that act of just being consistent should make you happy just as it is. So actually being able to list one or two or three or four different things that you think, okay, I'm going to actually do this and I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to let other things, other people convince me. Otherwise, I'm going to stick to it. So last quarter, I took up a, I, you know, I tried doing no social media. I did that. 
I tried to stop drinking, I did that. I tried to stop smoking, I did that. So I'm slowly working on trying to bring this principal center mindset into my life so that I can actually be as sharp as a goddamn bullet when I set my mind to something, right? I don't want to be, I don't want to falter and that's where a lot of insecurities and things come from. If you think about it, how many times have we had some sort of, all right, 2017, new resolution, I'm going to do A and then three months in, it just doesn't happen. And that, that's not only you, it's all of us. It happens to literally every single person. So how, what can we do to actually fix this? So something that gave me a lot of confidence to actually stick with what I believed in was reading uh, Gandhi's book, My Experiments with Truth. In that book, he basically talks about a bunch of different things that he tries experiments with throughout his life and talks about how he actually goes and executes them. So regardless of his politics, just as a common human being, understanding how he was actually able to accomplish a lot of those things was really, really inspiring. What I want everyone to do now is try to write one or two things that in the next month you want to do consistently. Something that you've always wanted to do, but you know, just never had the motivation or never had the time to really get into it. And write that down on a piece of paper and create some sort of plan where you actually allow yourself time and energy so that you can go through and continue with that. We need to help each other switch into this principle centric mindset. Help your friends reach their goals, right? Ask them what they really want, what it is they want to do and help them get to it. And I think if we all create an environment where we're boosting each other, then actually being able to successfully go through with these will be simple. And when I say principles, it could be actions, it could be mindsets, it could be, you know, I want to be able to donate to the homeless every time I see them. Another principle, I want to be able to tip more every time I go out. I don't want to tip like a bitch anymore. Those are all different small little things you can do. The idea is consistency and not faltering. So that's what we're going to do. 2020 is going to be a new goddamn year. We really coming out of here swinging. Like we are going to be some amazing human beings. So good luck. I will catch y'all on episode four. I'm out.